Hi there, friends. Welcome to this CBT Nuggets Micro Nugget entitled Understanding SAAS, PAAS, and IAAS with Concrete Examples. My name is Tim Warner. Cloud computing is certainly one of those topics that's here to stay in IT. However, I think you may agree with me that cloud computing terms, as important as they are, are often inaccurately defined. Specifically, what is Software as a Service, or SAAS? How is that different from a Platform as a Service, or PAAS offering? And then finally, what is Infrastructure as a Service, IAAS, and how is it distinct from these other two? Over the course of just the next few minutes, I'm going to use concrete examples to explain and differentiate each of these three methods of doing cloud computing. Let's get started. First, we have Software as a Service, also called SAAS. This is a cloud computing technology that is primarily focused at the end user. This is where we're running an application. Instead of it being locally installed on our computer, we access the application remotely, generally speaking, through a web browser. Microsoft's Office 365 and Office Web Apps is a good example of software as a service. For instance, you're looking at my SkyDrive, my Office 365 SkyDrive, from which I can, with just a click of the mouse button, open up a browser-based version of a Microsoft Office application. Here I'll create a simple PowerPoint file called CBTN. PowerPoint web app opens directly in the browser, and I have the familiar environment that I've come to expect. Add themes and do just about anything else through the software as a service application, through the cloud, as I can in a local computing environment. By contrast, Platform as a Service, or PAAS offerings, are primarily of interest to application developers who want to be able to focus on their code and not the underlying infrastructure, keeping web servers up to date, keeping server runtimes up to date. All of that stuff gets taken care of you by your PAAS hosting provider. Google App Engine is a good example of a PAS provider. Here on my Windows machine, I can use the Google App Engine tools to create, say, a Python application that will be hosted on Google's servers in their data center. I don't have to worry about the back-end mechanics of that. I can simply upload my application to Google, and they present the software to your users. I'll click Browse here in the App Engine Launcher, and this is a sample guestbook application. It's running on a local web server instance here, but just with a couple mouse clicks, I can put this up on my Google Cloud account, and anybody in the world can access this application. Again, that's Platform as a Service. Finally, we have Infrastructure as a Service, or IAAS. This is essentially virtual machines running in the cloud. This technology is useful both to software developers as well as systems administrators. As a developer, you may be constrained or limited by what a provider can give you in the PAAS world. You need, for instance, access to the underlying operating system, the web server software. You need the whole shebang. Similarly, if you're an IT systems administrator, you may want to stand up virtual machines across the cloud and let Amazon, for instance, or Google take care of the uptime requirements that you have, the power consumption, that kind of stuff. We're looking at the Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, or EC2, interface for my account. You see I have several virtual machines. To start one, it's as easy as right-clicking it in the list and selecting Start. You can then connect to the virtual machine over the cloud using traditional remote access methods, whether it's SSH or, in the case of Windows servers, I like to use RDP. Let's connect up authenticate, and now we have full access of this cloud-based Windows Server 2012 domain controller that I've named DC SQL. Pretty cool technology, isn't it? We differentiated between the three main varieties of cloud computing, namely software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you very much for viewing.